society can't kick rocks when it comes to what we can't do because we're here and we'll never leave. We're not average in size or even personality for that much like. They forced down our throat the idea of beautiful being a woman who either has curves or is extremely skinny. I think we all know that the media tells us we need to be slender and, you know, um, fair-skinned. This media perception of what we should be has become the reality for many and affects how they treat others when it comes to love. In this superficial society, can love be found for plus-size women? What's the truth? behind the perception and the size. I feel like society places a stigma in general on women, on plus size women. Um, if you go to the stores, and you go to the plus size area, their clothes isn't even that cute. It's just stuff that you threw together just to make sure that you have a plus size area. Meet Sideri Fleet. She's battled with her weight for years and the stereotypes that society places on women like her. Her struggle started in her youth and are rearing their head in her adulthood. From clothing to family issues and more, Sideri has been through it all. Camus, if I walk over there, I'm gonna hit you guys in the face. It's 9.30, we should have already been at the theaters sitting in a seat. I don't wanna have no messed up seat watching my favorite movie in my lifetime. Dating was always scary for me. I never felt like I wasn't gonna find love. I just felt like, when was it gonna be my turn? She's had struggles dating because of her weight, but she's held on to the idea that love is possible and has waited patiently for her Prince Charming. I think everybody wants love, and it's not that we can't find love, it's just that we get so adamant about when we're gonna get it that we feel like we don't. We're never gonna get it. Love comes to those who wait. You have to wait patiently for the perfect person to come along and sweep you off your feet and make you feel beautiful. Everybody, you know, I feel like people think that um, for big girls to, to be accepted are, you know, those are the things that they need to do. They need to be cheerful and bubbly. They need to know how to cook. They need to be, you know, just these extra kind, sweet people are are either these really timid, quiet people that don't want to say anything because they're the big girl. Meet Stephanie Jean-Pierre, a plus-size woman who's battling the criticism from society and people close to her. For Stephanie, it's an everyday struggle for acceptance. If I wanted to get plus-size clothes, I would have to go to like places like Ashley Stewart and stuff like that, and I didn't want to do that because being 16 and wearing a grown woman's suit is like not the business, so. <laughs> I can find a And if you can't make a woman feel good with what she wears, then how do you expect them to feel good about who they are? And how do you expect them to be loved by somebody else if they don't love themselves? Weight played a big role in her dating relationships and even in her childhood, Stephanie faced teasing and judgment. In middle school, I wore a sweater probably all three years. And um, the day I did decide to take it off, <laughs> all I got was, oh wow, you have big breasts. You have huge breasts. And I was like, thank you, I guess. I mean. Her classmates' comments affected her self-esteem and caused her to feel self-conscious at a young age. Comments like these can have damaging and long-lasting effects. It can even cause turmoil in romantic relationships. 
For Stephanie, nothing affected her as much as the comments that her current boyfriend made in their past. The first couple months that I met him, uh, one of his friends mentioned to me that he he said n not something about me, but but he said um, he didn't think he could um, be with somebody that was overweight. I think it becomes hard to differentiate what you think of yourself versus what other people think of you. And so what other people think of you becomes internalized and you then start to view yourself in that same way. And so if other people think of you in a negative way, you'll come to think of yourself in a negative way. I'm reverting back to what everybody kept saying. You know, you're not gonna mount anything because you're gonna look like a refrigerator. You're gonna not fit through the door. You're you're not cute because you're overweight. You're not like your cousin, so you're not, you're not gonna find anybody. And I would look at myself in the mirror and I would just hate the person I see looking back. And I was young, and it's, it's crazy to say, like, when I think about it, I was really young, and to think that way is kind of scary. When it comes to weight, it becomes this, it can become this cycle in which you want to be healthy and you want to feel good about yourself and at the same time you've internalized these messages that you aren't good or that you aren't healthy or that there's something wrong with you and that that can really contribute to a cycle of losing weight and gaining weight back that there becomes a hopelessness that get that fuels that cycle it would hurt and it would hurt to the point where i kind of developed bulimia i guess you can say um i would eat to the point that I was full, but then I would throw it up. I went into such a deep depression that I, that I kind of started cutting myself. And... It almost went as far as almost try to take my own try life. To take my own life. I was sitting in the bathroom, um, and, um, I had the knife in my hand. I was about to slit, slit the wrist of my left hand. I really didn't go through with it. I just remember after, like I just cried myself to sleep that whole night. I worry a lot with people with low self-esteem about depression and anxiety and anxiety. When I was in high school, I had uh, an interview with, um, I think it was Hollister, and um, all the girls that were there were, you know, slender white girls, and uh, there was there were some black girls there, and um, after the interview, I went home and I told my mom, oh, you know, I don't think I'm gonna get it. And she's like, well, those places are looking for uh, girls that look a certain way. And it was just like things like that, like a mother shouldn't say that to a daughter. What, what were they looking for and why don't you think I fit that? I recently went home and uh, she, uh, she told me that I had gained weight and then she asked if I was pregnant. <laughs> I was broken. I just, I couldn't even talk to her. I'm your daughter, and you should love me regardless. <laughs> and you should, <laughs> if you want what's best for me, you wouldn't constantly hurt me. <laughs> you wouldn't say the things you say. It doesn't make me want to lose weight. <laughs> it's almost like I'm doing it in spite. It's almost like, it's almost like I'm doing it in spite, doing it in spite. One thing that's really, really helpful for people who have been disempowered or disenfranchised or put down or insulted or bullied is to find ways to empower themselves, to do one thing every day that makes them feel competent and in control. And that can be something 
tiny, like balancing a checkbook, or it can be something bigger, like taking dance lessons. Anything that helps people to feel every day some sort of affirmation of themselves. We do community service, we do stuff that reach out to help other people. Bigger women can do what the skinnier girls can do. I love, I absolutely love my curvy figure. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, and we can do it 10 times better than they can. These women are more than what meets the eye. We all are. Their struggle is no different than anyone else's. Even though they've been judged, Sideri and Stephanie are proof that there is a rainbow after the rain. I'm currently in love. Um, I thought I was in love in high school, and obviously I wasn't. Um, but I'm in love now. Uh, me and my boyfriend, we've been dating for a year and eight months now. And it's been a bumpy road, uh, past experience and having to learn to deal with each other, but I really do love him. And we've talked about marriage and kids and uniting the families and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a feeling that I, I know I'm in love. But this shirt I'm so wearing for your mom for Christmas with my red pants. Oh, yeah. She has overcome molestation and even an attempt at suicide. Her past is not defining her future and she's pressing on. She's found love and is in a caring relationship with her soulmate. I wake up and he tells me I'm beautiful and he looks at me and he tells me I'm beautiful and I look at myself and I am beautiful. I'm not stick figure but I'm not morbidly overweight. I'm still Sideri, and I'm cool with the weight that Sideri is. And I'm happy with that, because I look at myself and I see somebody who doesn't care about what other people think about her, because she's happy. She's come to a point in her life where she is comfortable in her own skin, and she's learned to love herself enough for somebody else to love her back. And you know, now in retrospect, I realize that, you know, it, it really was uh, hurtful and um, dumb comment to me. And I think the more and more I started, you know, maturing and like learning, you know, more about myself, you know, I started to realize that, you know, stuff like that really doesn't matter to me. That, you know, if the person is cool and the person is, you know, has a good spirit and we connect, then that's all that matters. Stephanie is conquering her self-doubt and has found love in the midst of her pain. He makes me feel amazing. He's so supportive and kind. He, he truly accepts me for who I am, big or small. These two are finding their happy endings as we all deserve to. Tall, short, dark, light, plus size or not, we all want love. Our words and actions can make the largest impact on another and can dim or brighten our lights. We're all beautiful and we all have a light that should never dim. Everybody's gonna have their opinion about you. Everybody's gonna wanna say something. It's not that you have to build a tougher skin, it's that you have to know that you're beautiful. You might not believe it at first, but you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm beautiful every day. And it takes a while, but one day it'll click and you will see that glimmer of light. That light that, that just shines within you that makes you different from everybody else. We talk about wanting to be different in this society, yet when we're different, we're ridiculed. When we don't look like what the standards want, we're talked down to. But it's okay to be different. It's okay to be a plus size woman in today's society. Because at the end of the day, you're not doing anything wrong. You're beautiful. You have a life. You have something that'll change the world. Don't let people's opinion about it stop you from changing the world. <laughs>